The GT730 is the graphics card for the common man, the bastion for the budget buyer, and the eyes for the fiscally minded frame rate followers. This has been by far the most requested review on this channel so far, so here you go. With an average selling price of 50 to 70 US dollars, it is an affordable entry to PC gaming. Although I would always recommend buying used to get the most bang for your buck, I know it's not always possible for absolutely everybody. Maybe in your country, province, state, barangay, or city, the used market just is not worth it, or maybe it's even non-existent. Maybe for you, a new card is just a better deal. Whatever the case, a lot of people already have a GT730, and it is indeed an alright deal. Yet at the same time, it's really not. It has a good priced performance, yet it's a waste of money. It's a great entry level card, yet at the same time, it's pretty bad. Some of you might be wondering what the hell I'm going on about, and it's this. As you can see here, I have two GT730s, one of which is a good little card, the other a deceptive lie. Both are sold alongside each other on store shelves for the same price. One is a good card, the other is a waste of money. And I'll be showing you how they perform versus one another in a little bit. First, more about the card statistics. The small little silver card by PNY is the good card. The GPU is based off the 28 nanometer GK208 chip with 384 CUDA cores at 902 megahertz. It also has one gigabyte of GDDR5 with a 40 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. The other card is based off the old 40 nanometer GF108 die, making it the same chip that is in the GT530. With only 96 CUDA cores at 1400 MHz, it has less than one third the compute performance of the other GT730. This particular variant also has 4 GB of GDDR3 with a 14.4 GB per second memory bandwidth. I got the one with the most possible VRAM to give it the best possible shot at the other GT730. To put this 730 into perspective, it has half of the cores as the cheaper price to GT710, and as you'll see in a little bit, it's a much worse deal. I could go into detail about how scummy this is of Nvidia to do this, as this is not their first time to cut down a chip and call it the same thing. They did a similar thing with the 8400 GS, and even the GTX 1060 3GB card, although to a lesser extent. However, enough about that, let's see how they actually perform in games. First, we'll see at what settings the 4GB card can manage a playable frame rate. then we'll see how the better card fares at those settings, and then we'll see at what settings the better card can manage and at what frame rate it pulls at those settings. So first off, Grand Theft Auto 5. On the 4GB 730, we had to drop the settings to their lowest at 720p. And at those settings, we did, however, manage a playable 45fps average with a 14fps minimum and a 62fps max. As good as those frame rates were, the 1GB 730 was even better with a 43fps minimum and a 124fps max, with it running at around 85fps most of the time. The minimum frame rate on this card was only 2 FPS away from the average on the other card. With the 1 GB card, we managed to push the settings all the way up to medium at 1080p, and we still got a playable frame rate. With an average of 33 FPS, it is perfectly playable and much better looking at these settings. On Fallout 4, the 4GB card was only really playable at the absolute minimum settings at the absolute lowest resolution in windowed mode. Even at these settings, we only managed a 30fps average, with it dipping down as low as 22 in combat, and it only ever got up to 59 while staring at the ground. Again, with the GDDR5 card, the story is completely different. At those settings, the game maxed out the frame rate cap at 60 FPS. In fact, the game ran at 60 FPS most of the time, only ever rarely dipping down to 54 when the legendary Mire Lurks got bitey. And with this particular card, we managed to be able to push the settings to low at 720p, and it was perfectly playable at these settings with a minimum of 23, a 36 FPS average, and a maximum of 58. 
on The Witcher at the lowest settings and the lowest resolution, which is 1024 by 768 the GDDR3 card only managed a very unplayable average of 12 FPS, with it reaching as low as 7, but only ever touching 14 while staring at a low-res wall. The story changed drastically with the GDDR5 version of this card. At the same settings and resolution, the 1GB GT730 managed a very playable 31 FPS average, with it only ever dropping down to 21 when the monsters got mischievous, and the frame rate managed to reach 38 when just sitting around playing Gwent. The Witcher is an incredibly hard game to play, so I'm impressed that the card can run it at all. I know 3D Mark isn't really a fair test for these cards, but what it will do is give us a good baseline for the performance differences between these two cards at 1080p. And in Fire Strike, the average frame rate of the two graphics tests was a whopping 3.16 FPS for the 4GB card. The 1GB card did a little bit better with an average of 4.54. Although it doesn't seem like a large improvement, it really performed over 40% better than the GDDR3 version of the 730. So, finally the last benchmark we're going to be doing is Skyrim. At 1080p low settings, our slower 730 managed to get an average of 37 FPS while taking a jaunt around Whiterun with it only reaching as high as 55, and only dropping to 10 while overlooking a large vista. Whereas the other 730 at the same settings managed a solid 60 FPS cap at all times. So, after we pushed the settings to the max at 1080p, we got a minimum frame rate of 20 with it reaching 43 and playing at 34 FPS most of the time. So as you can see, the GDDR5 variant of the GT730 is the clear winner and the far better deal. In fact, I would say that if you had the option to buy a GT710 or the slower GT730, go with the GT710, as you'll get the same performance for a cheaper price. To prove my point, I ran Skyrim on the 710 at low at 1080p and got nearly the same frame rate average as the slower GT730. I really don't see how Nvidia can get away with selling an inferior product at a higher price. Anyhow, people still buy it. However, I'd suggest that if you see a GT730 in the store or online, take a good long look to see which one it actually is before buying. But all things considered, if you're looking for a new GPU for the sub $70 price range, the GDDR5 384 core variant is actually a pretty competent card. Would I ever buy a new one? Nope. But that doesn't mean you don't have to. If you like this sort of low-end benchmarking and weird old hardware reviews, make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all the nonsense that goes on on this channel. And as always, thank you folks for watching, may your frame rates be high and your prices low, and I'll catch you folks next time.